Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life men. Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson. I'm going to get to this week's Torah portion. I just did it, I just loaded it on my computer, but I had something really funny I had to tell everybody. See, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road and I'm here somebody's, I'm in their garage because I don't want to wake anybody up in the house when I'm doing my Torah portion here. So, I took down some of the things behind me, I took down, there's a piece Pizza box here. I actually took it down so the background didn't look too bad. So it was really funny as I was watching the video. I didn't realize. Look what's right next to my head. A pagan Christmas tree, and I didn't even realize it. That's hilarious. Uh, so I just wanted a lot to laugh, everybody. Uh, so when you watch the video, try not to get distracted by that pagan symbol hanging by my head. I didn't put it there, and I didn't see it to take it down. But I just thought it was very funny, everybody. Now here's this week's Torah portion. Have a great week, everybody, from Torah Life Ministries. Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries, and we're going to be reading this week's Torah portion. We're already into the eighth Torah portion of this year's cycle, and this week is Genesis 32, 4 to 36, 43. But before we get to that, I just want to let everyone know I'm in New York right now. I'll be teaching tonight in New York City. Tomorrow I'll be in the Boston area, and, and then I'm going to be heading on my way to... To Toronto, Canada, but first I'm stopping in, in, in Northern Pennsylvania, then I'm going to Buffalo, New York for some events, then I'll be in Toronto, Canada for a whole week doing some events there, then heading to Michigan, and then I'm going to be heading to Chicago, and then finally I'm going to end up in St. Louis at, at the final return conference, which is going to be in December. It is going to be amazing, and if you love Torah, if you love anything to do with the scriptures, you need to be at this conference, and all that information is at my website on Torah torahlifeministries.org Now, this week's Torah portion, we're going to look at Yaakov, Jacob. Jacob was in a situation where he always had to be strategizing to save his life, or at least he thought so. You see, the reason he left his land was because his brother was so upset that his brother was planning to kill him. So he was running for his life, and that's what we saw last week. He didn't have faith in Yahweh at that point in his life, so he ran. But then he fell asleep, he saw a ladder with angels going up and down, he knew angels were protecting him, angels blessed him for almost more than 20 years, angels were protecting him in the land he was. He had two wives, two maidservants, 11 children, and tons and tons of cattle. And then he was going back to his land, but he still had some doubt, some lack of faith, because he was losing sleep over this moment of meeting his brother, thinking that there was something really bad was going to happen, not knowing what was going to happen, because yes, maybe his brother was humbled and his brother was going to be fine, but he was thinking, well, maybe after all these years, my brother's anger and rage was just getting worse and worse, and he's going to kill me. And it didn't help when they told him 400 people are coming uh, of your brother, 400 of them are coming, marching towards us, and he was really scared. But again, he went to his strategic mode to split things up. Now, you could be strategic. Uh, in a righteous way, but this was all out of fear. He split up his camp, and, and, he, and, and he told, if, if one's destroyed, well, at least the other one won't be destroyed. So he split up his camp, and then he actually sent them in droves, and he sent gifts ahead of him just to try to simmer his supposedly brother's fear and so on. And on his way, it was very interesting what happened, because he took all his wealth and everything he's obtained, and, and his family and everything else, and on his way, uh, he got walking alone in a desert and one night when he couldn't sleep in a pitch dark and all of a sudden he starts wrestling uh, with who knows who it is. It says in the scriptures, a man. But this has been one of the most unanswered uh, scripture verses of all scripture. I mean, we know Jacob was already scared. We know he was in fear. Uh, but was he yet humbled? Well, this situation definitely humbled him if he wasn't humbled yet. I mean, he starts wrestling in a pitch dark with a man not knowing who he is. And he starts winning. And he tells the man to bless me. To bless me. And whoever it was, and again, some people, some of the sages say it was the angels. Some of the sages say it was the devil. And some of the sages even say it was his brother Esau. But regardless who it was, he was humbled because two events happened. Number one, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And he didn't know, Jacob didn't know at the time the significance of what was happening, but he knew something was powerful about that. 
He knew that. And the other thing he was humbled by was his hip bone was dis dislocated, and he started to walk with a limp. So every step he took after that would remind him of this situation. And why do we say it was humbled? Because prior to this situation, he had an attitude of... Of, 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 of he had everything going for him actually you know even though he was running for his life you know even though he was deceived by by Laban and to marrying these two women he was still blessed and he knew it so he must have had some type of confidence within him even though he had fear within him but what did he do when he saw his brother he bowed seven times seven times and his brother kissed him and and, and just opened it, welcomed him with open arms uh, we see it was a special event that happened there in the desert at nighttime. And some people even say that nobody was there, that Jacob was wrestling with himself. But how could he be wrestling with himself if he ended up with a physical condition the way he did? He was definitely wrestling with somebody. We do know it was the pitch dark. We do know he lost sleep over the situation that was about to happen with his brother. We do know that he wasn't so scared not to go back to his brother. So he must have had some type of confidence that it would be okay, but still had fear. But why did he fear Yahweh is the real question in my mind, because Yahweh told him, you know, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be protected. Yahweh showed him he was blessed. He had two wives, two maidservants, eleven children, and he had all this flock and all this cattle. Why would Yahweh give all this to him and take it away? Yahweh told him his descendants would be a massive amount and they would be filled with earth. And, you know, what did he have to fear? Was it doubt? Well, he doubted Yahweh to begin with, and that's why he started running to his life to begin with. But it just shows that Yahweh does have a plan for all of us. And regardless of our own fear, our own doubts, our own lack of faith, his plan is going to come true if we ultimately stick to, to the basics of the Torah and the Scriptures and remain faithful to that. And that's what Jacob did. And we see here a lot of different things here. We see in Genesis 32, 8. It says that Jacob became greatly afraid and distressed. And that's what we were just talking about. Uh, but let's look at some other interesting things that it says in this week's Torah. You know, one of the things I teach about a lot is diet. And we look at this week and it talks about uh, the, the animals that Jacob had with him. And some people might just think it's goats or sheep. But it said clearly that he had cows and bulls. And, and he offered some of these cows and bulls as, as a gift to Esau. That's how we know he had cows. So they must have been taking some cow's milk and some goat's milk and sheep's milk. Uh, they must have been doing some of that. It says here they even took dirty milk camels. So they were actually milking camels, it looks like, which is quite interesting. I've never saw that until this week here. Maybe one of the viewers out there can comment on that, but 30 milk camels. That's one that, you know, when I read that, I, I've read it before, but I just, I guess I overlooked it. Uh, so we're going to look at that. But then he says, you know, we talk about him wrestling with this man which until daybreak, which daybreak came. His name was changed to Israel, and then after the day broke and that man left, departed, whoever that was, what happened was, you know, as daybreak came, he looked forward, he saw his brother Esau coming to 400 men. And that's when he decided to divide his camp and split up his camp and everything else. And, and there's so much about his, I don't want to say deception or righteous deception, but he did all this out of fear. You know, and, and maybe righteous soap is if you're scared for your life, you, you know, some people don't even think, at least he had the mind to think about, hey, something bad might happen here, let me try to, you know, save uh, some people or so on. But... You know, and, and, and another interesting thing is he, he, he put his loved ones last, hoping that by the time his brother and his brother's men got to them, they would be surviving and they would be alive. So he told his maidservants to go first with her children. He told his second maidservant to go second. And then he told uh, his, his Leah to go third. And then finally he told uh, Rachel to go last. And, you know, his, so his most precious uh, possession, you know, was Rachel, his true love. He told to go last. You know, so hopefully that that would preserve the situation and, and Esau would have enough of destroying everybody by the time he got up to them. So, you know, he was just trying to think. He was trying to think ahead. Uh, but then everything comes to a fold. He meets his brother. Everything goes great. You know, it couldn't have been better, actually, for Jacob. Y Jacob wanted to give his brother all these gifts. His brother said, no, keep them. You know, but <laughs> it's like two Jewish men bargaining. Jacob said, no, you keep it. And he said, no, you keep it. Uh, it was pretty... Uh, interesting that, but then we go on to we see that Jacob actually didn't go back to his land. He goes to uh, another place, and, and, and this is where 
the issues come, and this is what I want to talk about this week, is he goes to this other place and his life isn't as good as we think it is. I mean, first thing that happens is his daughter, uh, his daughter gets raped, kidnapped and raped, and then one of his sons actually has uh, sleeps with his maidservant. So, and, and Yaakov knew this, and, and, and it's just, I mean, you think about family problems that people have. Yaakov had family problems. And then finally, it didn't end. You know, when he had Joseph, we'll see in the future what happened with Joseph. His heartache. And remember, he was an old man, everybody. He was 77 when he got when, when, when he got to the land, and he was 84 when he got married. This was 20 years later. So he was probably like over 100 years old, or almost close to 100, with all these hardships happening in his life. This would break somebody. And what just seems amazingly amazing to me is, is regardless of his fear, even his so-called lack of faith, even his so-called tragedies in life, he was a survivor. He was a survivor. Why? Because Yahweh told him he would be blessed and he would overcome all those hardships. And he did. He was, you know, almost 100 years old and all these things were happening to him. He never gave up. He never gave up. He always looked for a way out. And that's what we have to do, everybody. You know, some people say the end times are coming. You know, everything appears like they're coming soon. Maybe there are, maybe they're not. But regardless, we can never give up. We always have to look for Yahweh's ideal plan. And Jacob, it says, he prayed to Yahweh. And he said, even though Yahweh already told him he would be blessed, he said, please keep me safe. Please watch over me. Please don't let my brother destroy me. So he stayed in prayer and he always looked for a way out. And that's the ultimate message of this week's uh, Torah is we have to never give up and always stay in prayer. You know, and Yahweh will give us a way out. Uh, so this is the things we see happening here. And, and, and that's what we have to remember, everybody, that regardless of, of, of the hardships there are in life, there's always a way out. And there's so many unanswered questions of this week's Torah, but in the future weeks we start to see the answers come alive. And this week's Torah finally ends with uh, the line of Esau and, and his descendants and so on. And we see one of his descendants was born, uh, Amalek. And Amalek continued the issue that Ishmael started and was, was, was continued through uh, Esau and continues to Amalek, how they continuously and continuously were up against Yahweh's chosen people, they were up against them, and they continued to be their enemies, and so much came out of Amalek, and, and we keep seeing this, this line, and today it hasn't changed. Right out of the line of Ishmael, and Esau, and Amalek, continuously, it's creating hardships for uh, for 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 the Israelites, for 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 the whole all the tribes, and as we see this, we think about Esau versus Jacob. They were two brothers. They were twins, and not only were they fighting in the womb, but they were still at odds for a very long time after that. Well, it continues that you have the same brothers, you know, always going against battle and and trying to deceive each other. Well, it's no difference today, folks. You have people from the line of Ishmael, Esau, Amalek, trying to deceive and, and, and create hardships for the Israelites, and then you have the Israelites going against them. It hasn't changed. But we have to uh, stay strong and know that, you know, Yahweh has a plan for us, and He tells us what it is. So we have to remain faithful, remain strong, and not give up. All right, everybody, that's this week's Torah portion. You can go to TorahLifeMinistries.org and see more information on my website, or go to TorahLife.tv to see more videos. Now, tomorrow we have an amazing video up about the Bible history. We're going to be looking at that tomorrow. And everybody, until then, have a great week, and we'll see you again soon. Shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways.